some jazz to you can make it you. You gon' learn, you gon' learn, you gon' learn. It was just past one winter tree man with a four or five step to the door like, oh my gosh, just throw that cash in a back bag. Hey everybody, it's Liz from the Lemon Bowl. Vince from Irie Kitchen. And welcome to the Irie Lemon Podcast. Today's episode number 43 is sponsored by Beef It's What's for Dinner on behalf of the Beef Checkoff. This organization represents the over 700,000 beef ranchers and farmers located throughout the country. Of course, these are the people that bring us one of our favorite ingredients to cook with, beef. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information, head to beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Okay, we're recording. All right, guys. I know you, everyone really loved, we, we started doing more and more food episodes lately and you guys have really enjoyed them. So yes. thank you, first of all, everyone for letting us kind of get back into what we really love, which is food. And most recently I hosted a retreat with a group of food bloggers and one of our generous sponsors is responsible for one of our favorite ingredients that many of us cook with on a very regular basis, beef. Beef. I mean, really, you can't. Can't beat it. I mean, you guys, beef it's what's for dinner. We all know the famous slogan, and that is this group. So we have an expert here today. Vince, you're going to love this. Bridget, she's going to tell us 10 tips for grilling beef, because it doesn't matter if you're new to grilling, you've been grilling all the time, you can always learn better ways to make the most of different cuts, to make the most flavor out of a particular cut, whatever it might be. There really is a skill to grilling. <laughs> and I feel like it being like the most, like probably popular meat in America, the fact that so many people don't know how to cook it, I think this would be a great 10 tips for intro and it's like getting it right, right? Cause yeah. a lot of times I've had bad steak versus good steak, that's probably all of us, right? Right. We've had it way more times bad than good. So, 100%. Uh, I'm excited for uh, 10 tips to be a better steak chef, a grill, a grill master. I know, I'm, I'm ready for it. Bridget, we're ready to be grill masters. So. Bridget, why don't you first introduce yourself and tell us about how you became the beef expert? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to be here with you guys today. I'm Bridget Wasser. I work at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. We are funded by the Beef Checkoff, so that's a self-help program that the beef industry funds um, to do research and education and promotion on their product. Um, and so I'm coming to you guys from the Beef It's What's For Dinner Culinary Center. I'm just outside of Denver, Colorado. Um, and in this culinary center, you know, it's a pretty good gig here. We get to do recipe testing and development for all the recipes we have on beefiswasfordinner.com. Uh, we get to do food service testing, you know, catering, just basically work with beef and figure out, you know, the best ways to do it to help folks like you guys and your listeners become grill masters. And so that's kind of what I want to share with you guys today. I mean, because what else do we have to do right now? You're cooking at home, you're grilling at home. So why not take this time to really master the grill? So when you can have folks back over for parties, you know, you're going to, you're going to wow them with your skills. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. Okay. So why don't you kick us off with our first tip? All right, so I'm going to go in order to keep it pretty simple for everything from how you're going to pick the best cut all the way through how you're going to serve it. So the first thing I think to think about is you want to pick the best cut for grilling. So you think about classic beef cuts like a ribeye, a strip, a filet, uh, or even burgers. I mean, all those things are going to go perfect right on the grill. They're made for grilling, right? They perform really well on the grill with that dry heat cooking method that grilling is. It's a high heat dry heat so you want something that's really tender and flavorful to begin with um, and you know it's going to be just perfect on the grill um, and as we're talking about cuts I, I also want to encourage folks to try different cuts as well maybe you maybe your go-to is a strip or a sirloin but what about trying something else that works perfect on the grill you know or maybe you're inspired by a recipe you see when you go out or you're online or something why not try a flank steak um, right. um, you know, so it's just about trying different cuts and beef, beef is versatile. So we've got a lot of different cuts and a lot of different price points. Um, and if you pick the right cut and you prepare it correctly for the grill, it's going to come out amazing. Uh, so that's kind of my first tip. I just want to make sure you get the right cut um, and either know if it can go straight on the grill or if it might need to be marinated before it's grilled. So what do you uh -huh. guys, uh, what are your favorite cuts that you're grilling up this summer? Well, I have, a, I have a question. So how do you know, right? We're thinking about someone who doesn't yeah. know anything about beef. Just go to a local store 
and see a, an open case and it just grab what looks great, right? So like, how do you know what's like the best type of meat for like a grilling a steak, for example, and what to look for while you're uh, at the store? Yeah, a couple of tips. One would be, um, you can always look, there's always gonna be a name of the cut on the package, right? So that's something that's consistent throughout the meat case. So it's not just beef or chicken or, you know, it gives you some, some indicators there in the name. If you know what you're looking for, Will help give you that guide. In some cases, the retailer puts a sticker on their package that says "Great for grilling." So mm -hmm. watch out for those, um, or look for names on the label that are cuts from the rib or the loin, like ribeye, strip, strip loin steak, top sirloin steak, tenderloin steak, or filet mignon. You know those are going to be like those. Those are those classic grilling steaks. Think about what you would eat if you're going to a restaurant and what you would see on the menu and then kind of shop that way when you're in the grocery store. You know, I always tell people, talk to the butcher, talk to who's working in the meat department. Don't be intimidated to do that because, you know, that's that's what they're there for and that's what they know. So if you're just not sure, give, just ask them, you know. So look for some of those indicators. Don't be afraid to ask. Also, um, you can always go to beefitswhatsfordinner.com because in addition to close to a thousand recipes using all the different cuts we've got a really robust cut section that will tell you about all the all the cuts you can find of beef in the grocery store and it will tell you exactly how to prepare those cuts can they be grilled should they be marinated all that stuff's right there on that website for you guys i have a question about burgers because i feel like the ground beef is certainly one of the most popular it's certainly very affordable you always kind of either have it stashed in your freezer or whatever but when it comes to a burger i always have been told that it's the good ratio is 80 10 80 20 is that correct yeah yeah that's that's really common for burgers so you want to look for the lean to fat ratio when you're buying ground beef ground sure. beef options in retail are certainly a great way to go but you want to use those usually more for ingredients like let's say you're making tacos or you know uh, enchiladas or, or spaghetti or anything you use which is like ground beef crumbles that you're going to make in the skillet for the burgers, if you can lean a little bit towards the 80-20 in that neighborhood, you're going to get a really good eating experience with your burger. Keep it juicy. Right. <laughs> that makes sense because you're not adding a ton of other things to it like you would be with, you know, top of night. Yeah. Exactly. So why don't you give us your next tip? Okay. Uh, once you pick the perfect cut for grilling, you want to figure out if you are going to need to marinate it or if you can just season it, put it right on the grill. Uh, I am a classic like salt and pepper girl with a great steak because if you're starting with a great steak, like a ribeye, you know, you don't you don't want to cover up that great flavor that's there. So you really don't need, you know, a marinade. You just want to do salt and pepper. I, I'll let you do some garlic or maybe even your favorite steak rub, but just please don't overdo it because you're going to cover up that awesome beef flavor that is just so classic when you put beef on the grill. I like to mix up, this is a little bit of uh, kosher salt and black pepper, just pre-mix like 50-50. And it just makes your life so much easier. Um, but you can obviously just use your salt and pepper shakers. But I like that kosher salt, um, you know, some coarse ground black pepper. To me, that's all you need on one of those great tender steaks. So I, I say season it simply if you have a great piece of meat. Um, but if you do have a cut that needs a little bit of more TLC, um, you know, that's a little bit less tender, like a flank steak, skirt steak, um, you know, chuck steak, round steak, something like that, maybe something you found on sale when you're out shopping at the grocery store, then you want to consider a marinade. Um, and that's going to help tenderize that cut before you put it on the grill. So think about for a tenderizing marinade, you want to try to include some ingredients like acidic ingredients, like a citrus juice or vinegar, flavored vinegar, or even natural enzymes like those in ginger or pineapple, because um, you're going to want to tenderize that meat in addition to adding some flavor. So think about those things in your marinade. And the general rule of thumb is that you want to allow a quarter to a half cup of marinade for every pound of beef that you're working with. Oh, that's so a great just you know, yeah. kind of pay attention to that package before you toss it, see how much you're working with, and that's how much marinade that you'll need. Um, and then in terms of how long to marinate for, if you're marinating for tenderness, you can go six to 24 hours. So at least six hours, up to 24 hours, 
Um, and, you know, if you're marinating just to add a little bit of flavor, you know, I like this S&P on the steak, but if you want to add a little bit of like an Asian flair or Mexican flair or something to a good steak that doesn't need tenderizing, mm -hmm. then just leave that marinade on for a couple hours because more than that, it's going to make your meat mushy. You think yeah. about it like a, you know, that already starts out like so delicate and so tender. If you yeah. put a, a acidic marinade on that for overnight in your fridge like it's just going to be a mush mush so pile when you put it you, off the grill i have a question about freezing meat would you recommend marinating raw meat and then sticking it in the freezer or would you not recommend doing that or would you recommend cooking it and then freezing it i personally typically marinate it and then freeze it raw in the marinade but am i doing it wrong <laughs> No, you could definitely do that. I think probably most common is to um, freeze it. Let's say you're buying in bulk or, you, you know, you came across a deal or something and you're going to put it in the freezer and use it later. I think most commonly folks would put that in the freezer raw. Make sure you squeeze all the air out of your bag because you want to, um, you know, prevent freezer burn and just keep the integrity of that beef that's in that bag. And then most people would take that out, thaw that. Ideally, you're gonna thaw it in the refrigerator because you had thought about it ahead of time. That's the safest way to do it. Um, and then once it's thawed, then you apply that marinade. Uh, but you can do it where you put some marinade in and, and freeze it so that it's super easy, you know, when you pull it out and use right. it. Up. So either way, um, but you know, you want the beef to be fresh, not frozen when you add the marinade or whichever order you do that in so that it can soak it in. Right. Not for good point. Good yeah. Point. Um, again, for the beginners, what, what's a good temp uh, I should get my meat to before I start cooking it? Like my steaks, you know, some people throw it right out the cooler, other people let it rest for a little bit. What is, what is your- Good question. Time? I've heard both directions on this. Yeah, I mean, that's a definitely a, a debate. You know, I mean, I think that a lot of people like have their preference and their way to do it um, because we are we are part of the checkoff and we have USDA oversight. I have to say that you go straight from the fridge to the grill uh, because that's the safest way to do it. Right. I mean, Vince, you're, you're a chef. So like, you know that you can't let that beef sit out and get in the danger zone, so to say, where the where the bacteria could, you know, grow. Party, party. I remember that from school. You gotta stay out of the danger zone. So, uh, so you know, I think the safest bet for, for folks, especially like, you know, those that aren't quite as experienced, would be to take it straight from the fridge to the grill. We've done a ton of testing on, on that method here um, in our culinary center, and it works. So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of debate out there, but it certainly is safe to take yeah. it straight from the bridge to the grill. Cool. Okay, ready for another tip. All right, so you wanna prep the, your grill. Um, I want you to preheat your grill. You know, you can preheat it to your manufacturer's instructions. If it's a gas grill, you're probably gonna give it a good 10 minutes. If it's a charcoal grill, you're gonna make sure your briquettes get nice and white. Um, you know, and if you have a pallet grill, for example, you're just warming it up and you wanna preheat it. You don't wanna put your beef on a cold grill just like if you're cooking on a stove top or something um, and make sure you clean your grill before you put that beef on so wipe you know as it's preheating it's a perfect time to to brush your grill grates make sure your um, your catch underneath your grill is cleaned out and then uh, ideally when you're cleaning your grill you want to oil the grates as well so you put a little olive oil you know on a towel or paper towel or something and just oil your oil your grates once you've cleaned them and that's going to allow that beef to not stick to your grill when you put it on it's super hot so the next step is just making sure you get your grill ready to go um, so that while you're pulling your beef from the fridge and you're seasoning it or you're pulling it out of the marinade like it's just it's getting it to the perfect spot and just think about making sure it's clean um, and making sure that you put a little oil on the grate so that the beef doesn't stick. Okay. Now, if someone was looking for the right temperature to take a steak off the grill, depending on the level of doneness, is there a place on your website where they could go to find different grilling times and things like that? Yeah, for sure. We have that on it's what's for dinner doctor. You can find a grilling chart for every cut of beef and it gives recommendations for um, how, how long that will take for each cut, depending on like how big it is. But um, just know that, you know, you kind of got to do a little bit of work on uh, on your specific grill. We, have, we test everything, like triple test everything and try out different 
uh, typical consumer equipment here in our testing center, but you know, everyone has a slightly different grill and like you got that one 20 years ago when you got married or something. And you know, I don't know if it holds its heat the way it did when you first got it. So you got to do a little bit of legwork and just figure out your grill as well. But um, yes, we have uh, uh, guidelines for each cut and how long to cook them. And we'll link all of these in the show notes because there's so many good resources here. So I have a question. Let's say you're in the market for buying a new grill. Mm. Do you go propane or do you go like what, like, like what is the best type of grill you can get and what is a good price point in your opinion? Oh man, you just hit like the most controversial <laughs> question. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's good stuff. Oh man, it's a, uh, there's such a debate on that, you know, um, and I'm, I grew up in Texas, so I'm naturally a purist, uh, so we go, there's a lot of charcoal and hardwood use in Texas, a lot of like imparting that smoke flavor, uh, but hey, there's nothing wrong with a gas grill, I have one of those now as well, and it's just like the easiest thing to fire that thing up and, um, you know, do something quick, like think about for burgers or do- hot dogs or, you know, veggies or something, like a gas grill is what you need, you just, it's so quick and simple. Um, and then the pellet style grills are becoming so popular now. Um, and so they burn wood, so you get that smoke flavor, but it burns the wood. It's so easy to take care of. Um, and the popular grills now, like the newest ones, if you want to spend a little bit more, have like, I'm going to talk thermometers here in a minute, but they have built in thermometers with Wi Fi, you know, to an app. So, you know, you can go all the way from that Weber grill, like your first charcoal grill. Um, that you get when you're in college or whatever, all the way up to a super fancy, you know, six burner gas grill in your built in outdoor kitchen or your pellet grill with Wi Fi built in. So there's, there is something for everyone. <laughs> but uh, it just kind of depends how much cash you want to drop and like how much grilling you're going to do. And then also, like, where are you, you know, in the country and what kind of, do you have a house? Do you have an apartment? Um, and can you grill all year long? In, in Colorado, we're out there grilling in the snow. So, you know, no big deal. But, um, you know, what can you have where you live as well? That's another consideration. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's talk about thermometers. Because I think this is certainly, I know when I, especially like, a, a, when I'm, especially when I'm roasting a big roast, I really do think that yeah. it's so vital to have a high quality uh, cooking thermometers. So why don't you talk a bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, There's different kinds of thermometers, but I think that that is probably the best advice I can give you guys and your your listeners today is use a thermometer uh, because eyeballing it is like, let's let's face it, like none of us can really perfectly do that. Um, And the worst thing that you could do is is you could cut into it to take a peek while it's on the grill. And I know there's people out there doing that, like they did that last night, they did that this weekend. And like, that's the worst thing you could do because it's going to dry out your steak. You're just letting all those awesome juices just run right out on your grill. So the best investment you can make and to up your grilling game is to have an awesome instant read thermometer, right? There's a, there's several different varieties. I have like three that I'm going to talk about and show you guys. Um, so the newest kind are, um, either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi thermometers are totally wireless. Um, and so you can put these straight into your beef before you put it on the grill or your oven when you're cooking your holiday roast this, this holiday season, for example. Um, and you, it works with an app on your phone so that you can pretty much go anywhere and you know exactly when your beef is done. So there's a lot of varieties of those out there. Love them. Um, and just really like take the work, the guesswork out of it for you. Um, and then there's the classic like instant read thermometer, like thermopins are really popular example. A lot of chefs use these. And this is while your beef is cooking, you're not going to put it in before, but while you're cooking and you think you're really close to being done, you're going to probe your, your beef and see what the reading is. Uh, but you don't want to stick this in and out like 8 million times, yeah, exactly. right? Because again, you're going to lose those awesome juices. So that's kind of the thing with the with the instant read like pins, just don't don't uh, don't overdo it. Wait till it's pretty close to being done. Like, don't. Got it. Yeah, please. 
<laughs> and then, uh, something that's super cost effective is an is a thermometer that has a little base station and then a probe with a cord um, because you can put this in your beef close your grid grill lid right on the metal cord here leave this outside the grill and then you can tell the temperature on this or this works in the oven too these are high heat thermometers so they can hold up on the grill or in your oven um, and so one of the big things with the thermometer though is you want to use it correctly or it's not going to do what it's supposed to do i don't care how much it costs right so you want to put your thermometer like i have a beautiful prime strip steak here um, and you want to make sure you put your thermometer in the center so it's reading in the center of your cut um, and, you, and if you have a bone-in cut, like let's say you're doing some tomahawk steaks or ribs or something, you want to not have your thermometer resting on the bone because it's not reading accurately. So ideally, I'll go just go in the side of my steak until I reach about the midpoint, and then I'm going to leave that in there. Um, and let's say I'm grilling like five or six of these at once. I only need, if they're all the same size, I only need to put it in one, and it's going to work for everything that's on my grill. But this is a foolproof way to make sure you get the best doneness because, you know, again, we can all say, well, I know my grill, it takes four minutes on each side, it's perfect. Well, then something's not quite the same as the last time you did it, and then you're going to be totally disappointed yeah. when you cut into it. And, and number one, I don't want anyone out there cutting into their steak before it's done on the grill. <laughs> um, just tons of holes in it. Like, it's just not, it's not good. It's not good for your beef. It's not worth it. So, um, so just put that thermometer in there once and just leave it alone. Um, and again, there's something for every price point, you know, that, you know, makes your life so much easier and makes you a true grill master, I'd say. Yeah. So that blue, uh, Bluetooth, uh, thermometer, what's that brand called? The one that you're using right uh, now? The, this one? This yeah. One? Yeah. This is uh, this brand meter, M E A T E R. That's on our Not endorsing, but that's one awesome brand you can check out for a wireless option. Uh, what I like about that one is on the app that you just have on your phone, like it, you can set your temp before you start your target temp, and then it'll alert you when okay. you get to that. Yeah, so I like want that. Yeah, I'm getting that. Sure. It's a true set it and forget it, like. You know, you can go make your other dishes in the kitchen, get things ready, entertain, have have a beer, you know, right. whatever you need to do, and like you're, it's going to tell you when it's time. So you yeah, especially when you're entertaining and you're trying to cook a million things. I mean, yeah. you know how many times I forget about the grill and I'm just like, ah! Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it takes it takes all that guesswork out of it for you, um, and it just kind of makes it, you know, makes it super simple. Make sure can you, you talk a bit about the importance of letting meat rest? and why yeah my, for sure that's my uh i got a couple final tips that i wanted to make sure when you're thinking about when you pull the beef off the grill so let's say we you know you've been using your thermometer right whichever one you have whichever one you, you can find in that junk drawer in your kitchen uh and you're going to get to the exact gunness that you want because you know i i like my beef like a nice medium rare to medium but we do have folks out there that like it a little more well done so the other thing that the thermometers do is they help you cook for a crowd. Like if, yeah. if somebody wants medium rare and somebody wants it well, you know, then you're not having to guess and that thermometer trick really helps for that. Um, so let's say we hit, we hit our temps that we want uh, for our beef and we're ready to pull it off the grill. A couple of things I want you to think about. Number one, you have to, have to, have to rest the beef before you cut it. I'm talking like just five minutes, five to 10 minutes is all you need. I know it's hard to wait. You wanna like try it and you wanna make sure you nailed it and you're, you're starving, but please give me that five minutes um, because you're pulling, think about it, you're pulling really hot meat off the grill and the juices are, they're cooking inside the beef. Um, and so you wanna give it that time to allow the juices to settle, redistribute in your beef before you slice it. If you don't, if you've ever done it right away, you know the, the juices just run out right on your cooking board or right on your plate, and that definitely dries out your beef. So just give it that five minutes before you slice it, sit it on your counter, on the cutting board, or whatever you're going to cut it on, just give it five minutes, pour yourself another cocktail or something, and make yourself wait that extra five minutes because it's just exactly. so important, it's so key to a great grilling and eating experience with beef. 
Um, and then the other thing is, I have a flank steak here because I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> um, you know, you, yeah, oh yeah, we got plenty of beef broth here today. But if you were going to marinate this, you know, before you grill it, the one thing I want you to think about when you're cutting this, so you you rested it for your five minutes, is you want to make sure you're always cutting beef across the grain. And it's probably easy to easiest to see the grain direction in a flank steak, which is why I have that cut with me today. <laughs> yeah, long muscle fibers or grain that are running the whole length of the flank steak. You want to cut thin slices across that grain. You know, maybe I'm making fajita tacos or stir Asian grill, whatever whatever you're doing with it. Make sure that you cut across that grain, and you want to slice it thinly. Yeah. Um, and that's going to make it more tender. If I cut the wrong way and I cut with this, then you're just chewing that forever like beef bubble gum, and that's you know you just put all the time into it. Um, you know, marinating it and then grilling it, and then now everyone is at your at your house is just right. You know, <laughs> sure, right. So you know, what a waste, right? So always cut across the grain. Um, if you can't easily determine it, then make a few little end cuts on the on the very ends of it, um, your steak or whatever you're cooking, and just get a feel for it. Um, and then before you kind of go at it and just start cutting the middle of your piece, you know, do a few in cuts to make sure you're, you're doing it right. But resting and cutting across the grain, I mean, those are the things you got to do. Um, yeah. don't, don't do this whole process and all these other tips we talked about and then <laughs> not do the last two things and then just <laughs> right? the whole thing. <laughs> right. so true. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, I love it. Um, I mean, yeah, I think a few other things that I'd say just um, to remember as well is, you know, don't you got to kind of leave the, leave it alone when it's on the grill. There's no need to go like pressing mm -hmm. on it, flipping it 82 times, like <laughs> let it be. You really only need to flip it once when it's on the grill um, because if you overdo it, you're going to you're going to dry it out, and and yeah. like you don't need to smash your burgers when they're on the grill to just smash the heck out of them. Like there's not going to be any great juice left inside. So <laughs> we just like leave it alone. Um, and then I, we talked about not cutting into your steak while it's grilling, but also don't turn it with a fork because know, you're going to pierce it. Fork <laughs> so, yeah, so just use, use your good old spatula or some tongs for really anything you're grilling, like a fork, Come on, don't you need you need some tongs? <laughs> yeah. The tongs that you gifted us are perfect. They're really long. Yeah. The long tongs. Yeah. Right. Love them. Grilling, grilling tongs, grilling spatula. Oh, yeah. You're also not gonna have to get your hand in there over the fire to turn it with a fork. Um, I'd probably like you guys to use tongs the most because I'm worried that the spatula is gonna you're gonna be tempted to just like yes. smash it. You know? <laughs> I don't want you to smash yeah, exactly. it. Let it be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. What about you guys? Like uh, one other tip that we hear is people will put dimples in their burgers. Like oh, you're yeah. making your patties and you put like a little dimple in the middle, and that helps it from really puffing up, and so to help it cook evenly, just like yeah. a golf ball size little dimple in the middle. Um, have you guys done that before, or do you have any oh, other yeah. tricks that you? Can um, I will say I think finishing salt is underrated, and I think that. You know, a lot of times with a cut of meat, you're really just cooking and seasoning the outside. And mm -hmm. I love, once you slice it, a little extra sprinkle of even just kosher salt, I think goes a long way to just making sure every bite, because to your point, you don't need a lot for good good steak, but salt brings out the flavor of the fat and the savoriness and the beefiness, yeah. the umami. So a little bit of salt yeah. once you slice it, just and as, as opposed to just seasoning it. What about you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like uh, keeping it simple, like as you said, while seasoning. But because I am Jamaican, I like I like to use like more flavors, right? And so I've been playing around a lot. I think the best thing is to pick like four or five main themes that you like in food and you like in steak, and then have that be like your most of your marinade. So when you like cook it, you don't have to mess with it too much. And when you slice it, you can still get a great meat flavor. We also can get that nice like seasoning flavor too but it's like a balance you have to get it right because yeah. you don't like put too much sugar in it and it uh -huh. tastes like 
a sugar stick and that's not what you want. And you put too much ginger in, it's going to be too gingery. But, yeah. Right? So you have to kind of like play with your cut. Um, but I think just getting that perfect balance is perfect yeah. for your steak. I agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you can get your marinade just right, I mean, one thing to watch out for is with, if you got a lot of sugar in your marinade, it can definitely burn on the grill. So yeah. maybe pack it dry before you put it on the grill. Uh, because if you want to get that browning action with your beef on the grill, that's what brings out that awesome beef flavor that we're used to. And if your beef is too wet when you put it on the grill, you won't get as much of that, that browning action. So if you're marinating or even if you just are pulling a steak from the fridge, you can always pat it dry with paper towel before you put it on. That's going to really get that browning in there. Um, and especially think about it if you've got sugar in your marinade because uh, it can cause your grill to fly, flare up a little bit and, and kind of burn the outside. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and we'll put a link in the show notes for both. I know you have a ton of recipes for, I'm sure many of them have marinades in them. I have a lot of beef recipes. I know like in the Lebanese world, we sometimes marinate it with plain yogurt, like strips of sirloin into like a shawarma type of beef with cinnamon and um, so there are different things you can do if you really want to totally transform it to a different, especially some of the cheaper cuts of meat that aren't in like marble perfectly with fat. A little bit of like yogurt tenderizes meat really well, similar to how like the other types of acid do. Yeah. Also, yeah, uh, for sure. I, I have another thing Chad has thought about. And I, I'm actually curious about how, what you think about this. Um, so I personally like getting fresh ground beef to make my burgers. I'm completely against like the frozen stuff, and to me it tastes different. Is that just me, or is that like, or is that like true? Do they put like stuff in it to make it taste a little bit different than frozen? So I feel like a lot of people get way more value out of the ground beef if they just buy it fresh, because you can have spaghetti tomorrow, or you can put it on top of pizza, or whatever, right? And then just having frozen patties. I'm not against the frozen patties, but I just like, you know. The, oh yeah. I when yeah. you said that, I'm like, what do you mean frozen? And I forget you can buy frozen patties. Yeah, I see people buy from I'm like, yo, like, you can just, it's right here, <laughs> three bucks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, most ground beef, like if you're picking it up in the meat case, is just beef. You know, there's nothing added to it. Um, and I think, you know, it's super convenient for a lot of people. So, you know, it makes sense. I mean, chef's eating, you know, some like fresh ground beef that he's grinding in his, in his restaurant. But, you know, um, you know, most people are just like, give me what I can get. But, you know, you can rest assured that there's just ground beef in your ground beef. You know, there shouldn't be any additives, and they have to tell you that if they if they put that in there. Um, so you can always check the label just to make sure. But you know, one of the, ground beef is like one of the fun things that you can kind of mess around with right now. There's a lot of gourmet blends, particularly if you go out to eat, you'll see like um, you know maybe it's like a short rib and a brisket burger, or a chuck brown burger, and so there's some more gourmet blends out there where. You know, you're, you're adding different cuts and different fat sources from the carcass to really change up the flavor profile. Um, and so that's one of the fun things we're seeing with ground beef as well now. So um, even if you're not making it yourself at home, uh, grinding it yourself, you can get some unique blends out there. They're kind of fun to try. Yeah, that's smart. That's so tasty. I'm hungry. I know, now we're starving. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> right. closing um, last thoughts for us before we close out. Yeah, for sure. No, I think, um, I think, you know, we gave you guys some good tips. So I just encourage you to get out there. Don't be afraid. Um, you know, master that grill, master beef on the grill, figure out what cuts, what recipes, what you love, figure out how your grill works. And then, uh, you know, you're ready to go anytime you want to throw beef on the grill. And it's, there's, there's a cut for everyone. So find what works for you. Uh, don't be, don't be shy. You know, make it work, and uh, and check out beefitswestfordinner.com. Tons of tips and stuff there for you guys and recipes as well. Well, thank you so well, thank much. Thank you. So many tips. I, I learned some things. I know. I learned a lot. I, I love this because even you know, I think <laughs> what stage Thanks, you're at, uh, you can learn a ton. So thank you so much for for being here. All right, yeah. We'll thank you so much for having. Me. Happy grilling. Thanks. Thank bye. All right, see you. Bye. Soon, just to today, yes, you. You gon' learn, you gon' learn, you gon' learn. It was just past one win, two, three, man. With a four, five step to the door, like, oh my gosh, just throw that cash in a back bag.